Did you have any idea um, when you were a child what you wanted to do or whether you'd ever be in space or anything like that? When I was a kid I wanted to do what my mum did was to be a nurse and then I wanted to do um, uh, a doctor and then I sort of kept changing my mind. Um, I never really focused on anything but I knew I loved science and so that's what I did at university. I did chemistry and it was just something to keep my options open because I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, worked in industry and then I heard of an opportunity to go into space, something, you know, I'd never imagined that this would be open to anybody like me, but the advert said, astronaut wanted, no experience necessary. And uh, that was my opportunity. So, yes, yeah, so having gone through all my childhood, never having had that even as a, an agenda item, all of a sudden there was an opportunity and I went for it. <laughs> so um, how did you hear about that advert um, for going into space? Um, what, where, where were you at the time? Is it sort of a special moment that you remember? Um. I, could, I could still remember, I was actually driving my car home from work, it must have been about I don't know, perhaps six-ish, something like that in the early evening, and I was bored with the radio station I was on, and I was just flicking through, you know, you push the button and then the next station just, just automatically dials in. And that's what I was doing until I found something that I wanted to listen to, and as I flicked onto this next station, and I don't know what station it was, there was the advert astronaut wanted. So it was uh, quite a fluke. Um, I had to wait till I got to traffic lights and I scribbled down a telephone number on the old petrol receipt I'd got in the car. And then when I got home, I was able to make a phone call and start the application. Um, I'm presuming that application is quite difficult. What sort of physical preparation do you have to do before going into space? I imagine it's quite a hard process. Well, <laughs> before being selected, we just had to be really healthy and fit. I mean, not super duper fit, you know, I didn't run marathons or anything like that. But if you're generally healthy, you can train your body to be fit for a particular purpose. So they were looking at really the, the medicals for the tests that the part of the selection process wanted us um, to make sure that internally, really, we were physically fit, that I wasn't going to get sick in space. Um, you don't want to have to call off a space mission because you're, you know, you're ill, that kind of thing. But, uh, but also it was so to make sure that I would be able to train, I'd be able to cope with things like the G-forces and the re-entry. And then once we were selected, then we started a bit of strength training and a bit of general fitness training, um, but still, I mean, I would never have classed myself as an athlete, um, but certain muscles, you know, things that you don't think about. When you're in a spacesuit, um, if it inflates, if you, if you lose the air in the spacecraft and you inflate your spacesuit, even just holding a pen, gripping it in your hands is really, really tough. You've got to really force your hands. So we were strengthening the muscles in our hands. You know? So the exercises that we did like that, as well as the standard things in a gym, you know, just to sort of keep your arms and your legs strong. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and overall, how do you think your sort of perception of everything on Earth has changed slightly from, I don't know, being uh, taken away from it and in the, the complete contrast of space? Has that changed at all? Or? I think when you look back at the Earth from space, um, you do see it a bit more of a, let's say, a global perspective, I suppose. And there's, there is this thing called the overview effect that some people say you, your perceptions of Earth must be changed because you've seen it from afar. For me, I don't think I really changed my perception of Earth, but I did change my perception of what's important. Or rather, it confirmed what I'd learnt in the training, where I'd been then isolated from um, the, the community that I knew back in Britain, in Western Europe. Um, I was doing my training before emails, even before phone calls were easy. Mobile phones were almost unheard of. And so um, I did feel quite isolated then. And I realised then that what I was missing was my family and my friends. And when you look back at the Earth from space, that's what you realise you're not seeing, if you see what I mean. You can see the, the sort of the edges of countries, you can see the, the clouds, you can see condensation trails of aircraft in different parts of the world, but you don't actually see your family and your friends. And it's those interpersonal relationships that I missed. And that's what I realise in the end, that's probably what's most important in life. Where do you think the future of space travel is going and space exploration? I'd like to see a lot more commercial stuff going on in space. I and mean, we're already getting there. We've had astronauts who've paid for themselves to go into space, so self-funded astronauts. Um, we've had supply ships you know, that have been commercially made, commercially built. Um, and we've had um, commercial payloads going to space. So we're getting there slowly but surely. Um, very soon we'll have a m much cheaper method of taking people into space. And I'd like to see that for, for, like, for, the, for the normal everyday person, but I'd like to see it particularly for the kind of things that we're doing now to, to do more science and that can be commercial just as we have commercial science and companies who are investing in research and development on Earth.